Hey guys, this is Lori with LM's Crafty Creations. I am here to share a tutorial for you for my gatefold 7x7 mini album. It's going to look like this. I am going to have to totally make the pages on camera with you guys because I've already done this video once and my microphone and my camera weren't working. So, take two. So we're going to start off with doing the pages first. And so here is the first page. There's two page styles here. There's one large and one um, smaller. And so we're going to start off with the larger page style first. And you're going to need to cut, um, we're going to make four of each page style. So um, for your this base piece right here, we're going to cut four pieces so I already have my four, my eight pages made, so this is extra for me. So I'm only going to cut one of each of everything, but you will need to cut four. So this first piece is 11 by six and a half. So I'm going to cut that now. I'm going to cut on the six and a half inch side first, because I did find it saves my paper that way. And then 11. Um, I don't need this piece. So then I'm going to score on the 11 inch side at six and a half. So right here. Okay, so there's my base piece. Then, so you can go ahead and fold on your score line. Actually, I'm going to fold that way. Fold on your score line and burnish. So there's our base piece. Okay. Now we are going to put, let's see, let's use, let's go ahead and make the pocket for the back of the page. So we're going to take this scrap piece that we just cut from, and you're going to cut it to five inches. This is how I saved paper on this project, guys, by cutting it this way, by seven and a half inches. So this is what you have left, and this is our pocket. So we're going to score this five by seven and a half inch piece um, on the seven and a half inch side at half an inch, and then I'm going to rotate it this way and score it half an inch on the five inch side and then rotate it again and score it again on the other seven and a half inch side. I just like scoring on this side because it's easier for me but you can absolutely score at half an inch and then at seven inch turn your page and then score a half an inch there if that makes sense to you. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my tape as we go to this as soon as I find it. Don't drop a million things. So I'm going to add my tape. Now normally um, for the original album I used art glitter glue but for time's sake and since I've already recorded this once and messed up I am going to use score tape. So we've got score tape on three sides. I'm going to miter my corners. And then I'm going to flip this base page over this way onto the back. And I'm going to put my pocket here at the bottom left hand side. Okay, 
And I'm just going to line it up at the bottom and stick it down. There we go. Now I'm going to cut. I'm going to take another sheet and I'm going to do the binding. So I'm going to cut this sheet by three inches. Three inches by seven and a half. Oops, almost did seven. Seven and a half. So I'm going to take this sheet again and I'm going to cut my belly band and I'm going to cut it at two inches. by, let's see, five, about five and I would just do it, instead of doing five and a half, which is what you would normally do, I would do it one mark less than five and a half. For some reason, what is that, five and seven eighths? Is that, no, that's not right. It's less than five and a half, not less than six, duh. So, whatever. <laughs> Sorry. So now, I'm going to take these two pieces. And so, on, I think I cut this wrong, because that does not look right at all. No, this one's not right. So... Let's try this again. Is that right? Yes, there we go. Okay, now I'm going to take the smaller belly band piece, the two inch piece, and score it on the five and like three eighth inch side at half an inch on each end. So at half an inch, and actually I'm going to rotate it and then score at half an inch. So there we go, half an inch on each end. We're going to do the same to this larger piece, the three inch by seven and a half inches. And we're going to score it half an inch on each end. Okay. Is that all clear as mud? So now I'm going to take this smaller piece first and I'm going to add my tape. Okay, so I'm going to take my base page here with the flap and I'm going to add the belly band first. So let's fold on our score lines and burnish. And I'm just going to put it, I don't know, about an inch and a quarter, an inch away from the bottom. I'm not really going to measure. I'm just going to eyeball it. I don't want it to be completely in the middle, and I don't want it to be completely at the bottom. So that's where I did. If you want an exact measurement, it is an inch and a quarter. Um, so now I'm going to take my three inch by seven and a half inch piece and fold on my score lines and burnish. I'm going to remove the tape backing. And I'm going to put it on the bottom left hand corner of the base page. So there's our first page. So now we're going to make 
and you're going to make four of those. So here is the smaller page. So we're going to cut, let's see, let's cut this base page first. You're going to cut the base page at five. Let's see, is this six and a half? I'm going to cut this at six and a half. And then cut this at five inches. So this is the bottom that your page is going to attach to. And this is extra. So I'm going to take this piece. To make this whole piece here, we're going to cut one piece at eight and three quarters by seven and a half. Now, this piece is going to be a little trickier. So I'm going to move all of these scraps out of the way because we really don't need them. Um, and let me show you what we're going to do here. So I'm going to take my scoreboard and on the eight and three quarter inch side, I'm going to score at four and a half. Okay, four and a half. And then I'm going to rotate it and score on the seven and a half inch side at half an inch on one end and I'm going to rotate it again and score it on half an inch on the other end. So if you feel more comfortable you can score on the seven and a half inch side at half an inch and then at seven inch instead of rotating it but I prefer to rotate it. It's just preference. So there's our page. So you're going to want to pay attention to what we do here. So you need to, to make sure Let's see. Make sure that the four and a quarter inch space is to your right. So, see, this is a four and a half inch space. This is a four and a quarter inch space. This is our flap. This is going to attach to the binding. So, let me show you what we're going to do here with my nifty gel pen. We're going to cut these off because we don't need flaps, we don't need hinges on our flap, if that makes sense. So we're going to remove this piece right here and this piece right here. So make sure you're removing the, the flap on the four and a quarter inch side. So make sure you measure before you cut. So I'm just going to slightly angle this here right past the score line. So you see, can you see, there's the score line right here, and I angled it right there. And then I'm going to turn this way, I'm going to cut this flap off. See? There we go. And I'm going to do the same at the top. So I'm going to cut, I'm going to kind of angle it slightly. I'm not going to go past the score line, and then I'm going to cut this flap off. So here is what it looks like. Right there. Okay? So I hope that's clear. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add tape to these flaps here. which I could have done that before I cut it, but I didn't want to confuse you guys. Hopefully I didn't. And I, I use 3 8 of an inch tape, so if you're wondering what size this is, it's 3 8 of an inch. So I'm just going to burnish this a bit. I'm going to fold on these lines and burnish again. And then I'm going to fold this way to create our flap. Okay? So here we have our two flaps here and then our flap here. 
and our two flaps here are going to attach to this base sheet right here, which we cut at five by six and a half. So I want my corners on my little undercut page to be rounded. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So I'm going to take my little corner chomper thingy and round my corners of this page. There we go. And now I'm going to remove the tape backing from this. Oops. And I'm going to open this flap because it's easier for me to attach it this way. And I'm just going to attach it at the very bottom left hand side first. And then I'm going to bring it up and attach it at the top. <coughs> And there is our undercut page. Okay, <coughs> excuse me. Now, I'm going to do the binding. So you're going to need two um, bindings for this project because we have two spines. So they're each gonna be four pages and I've already done one here and I'm going to do the other one on camera. So this one, you need one page cut at eight and a half by six and a half. You're going to start scoring it at one and a half inches and then score it at every half inch until you get to seven inch and you stop there. This will give you one and a half inches on each side to attach it to your book. <coughs> so let's get started with this. So the way we do this um, is I've already added my tape. So I've left a half inch space here and then added tape. And then I left a half inch space for my gusset, another half inch space for my hinge to attach to the tape, and then added the tape here. So does that make sense? So the tape has been added to like every second half inch space or third. Okay, well that doesn't make any sense at all, does it? Sorry, I'm, hope I'm not confusing anybody. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to fold. Where can I get? My score lines aren't really showing up here because it's black paper, so. Let's do it this way. This here. I've had some people tell me that they're not completely comfortable with doing the binding, um, the hidden hinge binding, and that it's confusing. So I understand that. It was confusing for me too at first until I got the hang of it. And now I probably go too fast doing it in my videos. So, um, I'm going to try to go a little slower this time so that um, maybe those of you who are uh, struggling can understand a little better. So here, so I've marked off all of my half inch spaces, my half inch score lines here with a white gel pen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold right here on this crease, this score line right here. That's the first fold I'm going to make. So I'm going to fold this and I'm going to burnish. Now I'm going to flip it back out and I'm going to remove my tape and then I'm going to stick it down and burnish. And then I'm going to bring this back out and burnish again. Okay? Now I'm going to fold right here on this half inch score line right here. So I'm skipping my gusset and this um, half inch space is going to stick to this one. So I'm going to fold right here. I have half inch gussets on this project. 
I'm going to remove my tape backing and stick it down. And I'm going to pull it over and burnish again. Now, again, I'm going to skip my gusset right here and then I'm going to stick this half inch space to the one with the tape. So I'm going to fold, I'm going to crease right here, right up against the tape and burnish. And then I'm going to remove the tape backing and I'm going to stick it down. And then I'm going to flip it out and burnish. Now again, I'm going to skip my gusset. This half inch space will stick to this half inch space. So I'm going to crease right here and burnish. I'm going to fold it back out, remove my tape backing, and then stick it down. Fold it out this way and then burnish. And that's it. So now I'm going to take my hinges and just fold them the opposite direction, each one, just to get them used to folding. And I'm going to burnish. And I'm sorry, just a second, guys. Okay, sorry about that. So now that we have our, our um, binding system, I'm going to go ahead and add tape to the back of this. And I am going to use my score tape sheets because it saves me time. So I'm going to take this sheet and I'm going to cover this as much as it will cover due to the size it won't cover the whole thing so I'll have to add some to it. Now if I weren't doing a video I wouldn't mind sitting here and doing like a million rows of half inch tape but since I am I'm going to try to save as much time as possible. I'm just going to cut off this excess tape here. Okay, and now I'm not going to use this one. I'm going to stick it to this because it's extra. Throw this away. And I'm going to add just a half inch piece right here at the top. Just to cover that excess that I missed. And I'm just going to burnish this really well. I've already done this to my other set of hinges. So I want to make sure I get a good stick on this one as well. Sorry, it may be shaking the camera a bit because it's on the table that I am working on. That's just the way it is. Get it in those creases really well. And now I'm going to add a quarter inch tape to my hinges. And I'm going to do it on each side. And then I'm going to miter the corners of the hinges.
Now before I miter, I'm going to burnish my tape down. And now, oops, my lights are flickering. Just going to miter those corners real quick. Okay, now our binding system is done and you want to make two. So, on to the next thing. Um, sorry, moving the camera. Um, now, we're going to go ahead and do the covers. And then we can add our pages and then we'll be done. Oops. Sorry about that. Seemed like my camera, like, or my computer blacked out for a second, so I don't know if y'all saw that or not. I hope not. Okay, so what I've done here is I've cut this paper down to 9 by 12 and this paper down to 9 by 9. And I'm going to attach it with 3 eighths of an inch tape. <laughs> on the 9 inch side. Try to get some of my stuff out of the way here. So now we're doing the covers of our book. So I'm going to remove the tape backing here and I'm going to join these two together. Okay, now I'm going to take my ruler, as I always do, and I'm going to give myself about a one inch guide for laying down my chipboard. You don't have to do this. It makes it easier for me to make sure I get everything even because I'm not great at getting things even. Okay, here we go. Okay. So, now, I've already prepared my chipboard pieces. Here's what you're going to need. You're going to need one piece at 7x7. Seven seven. That's this piece here. I've already covered all mine with tape, obviously. You're going to need two pieces at three and a half by seven. And then you're going to need two pieces at two inches by seven. I'm going to start with the three and a half inch piece. And I'm going to remove the tape backing from all of this as quickly as possible. And I'm going to stick this down lining up right up against the um, lines that I just made right here. Here we go. So now I should have one inch gap here, one inch here, and one inch right there. Now I'm going to put um, a piece of quarter inch tape down right here, lining it right up against the chipboard. This is the space. Um, some people use the thickness of their chipboard, you know, put together a couple times. I find that using quarter inch tape is easier and more convenient and it gives me just a little bit more space for when our, the book folds so it doesn't crack. Now you're going to take one of the two inch pieces and stick that down next. Line up 
lining it up again at the bottom and then right up against that quarter inch tape getting it as straight as you possibly can I don't know if I burnished my tape or not I think I did okay then again another quarter inch piece of tape and now it's time for the larger 7x7 seven seven piece I love those score tape sheets. They are so convenient for doing this. Especially when you're filming on camera, you can just rip it off. Something satisfying about that. <laughs> okay, and then you're gonna line this up again against the quarter inch tape and your bottom line. Now I'm going to do another piece of quarter inch. Oops. And I'm going to do the two inch spine piece next. Lining it up sticking it down. One more quarter inch piece of tape. And then your final three and a half by seven inch piece. Making sure I get it even. Okay. Now I'm going to remove the tape backing from my quarter inch spaces. so it won't be difficult to do that later. And I'm going to add um, half inch tape now all along the bottom. Should be able to add two strips. Whoops, just throwing things around. There we go. And I'm going to do this all the way around, which means I need to move stuff off my workspace so I can actually work. It's smaller. I'm going to need a little bit smaller tape there. Now, turn it around. Again, add my half inch tape to the long side. Oops, looks like my space. Looks like that's not big enough for another half inch piece. Let's try three eighths of an inch. Maybe I got off somewhere. Wouldn't surprise me. There we go. And now this side. Looks 
looks like half inch will fit right there. And now, I think I'm done with this, we're going to burnish. Again, it's hard to get this whole thing in the frame while I'm doing all this, so I apologize. And it is going to make the camera shake. Okay, so now I've burnished on every side. Now I'm going to miter my corners. And I'm just staying about, you know, an eighth of an inch away from this corner here. And now I'm going to slowly start using my bone folder thing here and start, or whatever this is called, scoring tool. And I'm just going to run it along this paper slowly to start getting it to fold up. You don't want to just fold it over right away. You want to start breaking those fibers so it gets used to folding over so that it doesn't crack. So now that we have that, I'm going to remove the tape backing. And I'm going to start folding it over. Okay, and then I'm going to burnish it down. I'm going to do the same to the other longer side stick my bone folder scoring tool up there and start running it along the edge getting it used to folding now I'm going to remove the tape backing and slowly start folding it over, pressing it down. Then I'm going to go back and burnish. Okay, now I'm going to fold in these corners a bit before I get started on these sides so that they crease in nicely when I fold these angles. So now I'm going to do the same on this shorter side. Remove the tape backing. start to stick it down. Make sure my corners are nice and round. Burnish it really well and then do the same on the other side. And we're almost done. We can add our binding system next.
Okay, looking good. Now that we've got it all covered in chipboard, we're going to start slowly just bending it upwards. And I like to take my little um, scoring tool and just really get in those crevices as it folds and burnish. Okay, I'm going to do this to this side too. You have to lift it up a little to make sure you don't tear your paper when you're doing this. Okay, and now I'm just going to keep slowly folding it over, bending that paper, and there we are. I'm going to fold it in a little bit. There we go. So there is our gatefold album. And now, where's, let's add our bindings. So what I'm going to do, what I found it easier to do, which I don't normally do, I'm going to take my ruler. I'm going to measure. So the bind, the, the spine is two inches. So I'm going to take it right up here at the top and I'm going to mark it a quarter inch at here and a quarter inch in from each side of the spine. I'm going to do it the same way at the bottom here and over here. This is just going to help me to line up my binding system correctly because I want a quarter inch gap on either side. keep losing things. Okay, now I'm going to remove the tape backing from here. And where I'm going to do is I'm going to take these hinges and line them up with these quarter inch marks on the top and the bottom to make sure that I have even spacing, okay? And there we go. I'm going to stick that down. I'm going to burnish it in to the crease here. I'm going to burnish in between my gussets. I'm sorry, I'm shaking the table again. Then I'm going to start to fold this in, burnish it some more. Same thing right here. And now I'm going to do the same on the other side. And we're almost done. I keep saying that, don't I? Sorry. So, again, we're going to line up our hinges at the top and the bottom. And we're going to stick it down. And then I'm going to burnish in the crevices on each side first before it really gets good and stuck. Again, I'm going to fold it up and burnish in there. There we go. A 
and we're going to close it up. Okay, and there is, we'll have to have some sort of closure, but there is our album. Now hang tight guys, next we're going to add the pages. I'll be right back. So now let's go ahead and put the pages on here. So the way I did this is, what do I have? I have extras. Okay. So again, you need four of the larger pages and four of the smaller pages for this. So what we're going to do is I started out on the left hand side and I did large page small, large page small. So that's what we're going to do here. And so let's start with the last hinge and let's do, I'm going to remove my tape backing from the hinges and I'm going to do a small page here. So I'm going to take one of my small pages and I'm just going to open it up and stick it down. And there will be a trick to this when we do it on the other side because they're going to kind of flip. So there's our first page and next we're going to do a large page so we're going to alternate them. So on this one and these are kind of tricky so here's our binding page right? You op flap opens and this is your binding pocket. So I'm just going to open that and stick it on the here like this because it's just easier for me. Just make sure that when you're sticking your pages down, you don't go all the way to the end of the hinge where the score line is because um, then your, your pages won't open properly. You know what I'm trying to say with that, right? <laughs> Okay, so now it's time for a small page. Now we're going to do a large one. I keep trying to open it right here, but it doesn't open there. turn my book around and so this is the front so large flip small large again with the pocket on the back and then small and now I'm going to do this side and this side's a little trickier um, because you're going to have to turn the pages around because it's flipped, right? So now we're going to do the large page on um, the last hinge here. So I'm going to flip my book this way, just like I did before. Hopefully I can still get you in the view, the frame. So I'm going to start with this hinge right here. I'm going to remove the tape backing. So instead of, let's see, now this one will still be the same. So now it's going to be flipped. So the pockets were on the back side right here on this part. When you get to the other side, the pockets are going to be in the front. So I'll show you what I mean in a minute. So I'm going to open it up and I'm going to put it on my hinge right here. So see how my flap is going in the opposite direction than it was before? Oops. So 
So, okay, so now here's the right way. So here's my pocket and I open it and this is my flap. So on the opposite side, when you have a large page, you have the pocket here and then the flap here. So it's gonna be opposite on this side. So let's go forward with a small page next. So that means that the small pages will be different as well. So here's our small page, and how did I do this? It's going to open this way, so it's going to go like this. Okay, so they open out this way when your other small pages also open out that way. So I hope that I'm being clear on that. It's kind of hard to explain. So now we're going to do another large page. And the pocket's going to go this way. do our last small page. And it's going to go this way. So there we go. Whoops, where's my trash can? Sorry about that. I usually keep it right next to me and I moved it up out of the way because I was trying to clean. Okay, so here's our book. Now you could do this section of pages and then this section of pages and close it that way and it will work just fine. You can really do this any way you want. But the way I did it is so they would alternate. I did a small one and then a large closed and then a small one and then a large and then the small one and then the large and then the large one and the small and then it folds up like this so they're kind of staggered. I prefer it that way and then it closes like this. So let me get out the finished product here and show you what um, I've done. So make sure if you're going to do this type of closure, you could do ribbons or um, whatever you want here. I chose this swing kind of closure. Make sure that you put this closure on before you mat this side of it, okay? So I'm also going to give you the measurements. So the measurement to this pocket right here, if you want to do pockets on your flaps like I did, let's see, is going to be four and a half by three and a half. You're going to score on the four and a half inch side at half an inch at each end, and then on the three and a half inch side at half an inch. And I don't know where my notes have gone for this project. Maybe these are it seem to have lost them. So, um, I'm sorry, I'm going to write this down as I'm telling you guys. So that way I can put it at the bottom. So four and a half by three and a half. These are the flap pockets. Um, let's see, what else? The photo mats that I did are three and a quarter by four and a quarter um, for this. What other measurements can I give you? So these inside photo mats here 
are four and a quarter by six and a quarter right here and let's see what else these are four and a quarter by six and a quarter as well and I did want to tell you I did some of those okay this like this so if you want to do some little booklets like this so this is like a um, landscape style portrait and it's just got the decorative paper here and then it flips up and you could put um, maybe a 3 by 4 photo here or journal and then a 4 by 6 fits here so if you want to make some of these these measure at seven and a half by six and a quarter and you score on the seven and a half inch side at three and a quarter to make these little booklets and they do fit in the pockets or under the um, the belly band like right here um, let's see I feel like I always leave measurements to something out. This is another, the same type of booklet. It's measured at the same, um, same measurements. I just did it portrait style. Uh, that's the same. And that's it. So besides this pocket right here. So here's another booklet. I just used the lace on the front and um, it opens up like that. So I made a little pocket with the lace on the front. But this pocket here on the inside back cover measures, it is, let's see, cut it at eight inches by three and a half. Score on the eight inch side, um, a half an inch at each end and on the three and a half inch side at half an inch to make this pocket. And that's it guys. I think that that's all that I did different. So here's how I close this book. I want to show you again um, since it's all this one is all matted so it closes small then large and then small then large and then small again and then large and then on the last one I do large and then because I like the small one on the front and then it just closes up nicely as long as you don't have any embellishments hanging which it looks like it's been catching right here on this so that's my fault and it closes like that and that's all I've got so I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I hope that you make this project. It's super cute. It can be used for um, th uh, four by six photos or the recipe cards like I have in here. And thanks for watching.